Welcome to Daily Extra. You're in Toronto for the world premiere of Hurricane Bianca. How yes. are you feeling? I'm quite excited. Yeah. It's been something that's been, you know, a long process for us, a couple of years. Uh, and the great thing is now finally everybody can see it, which mm -hmm. is quite exciting. I understand you're new here, Miss Del Rio, but it is against school policy to feed the students. So that's why you're here. You smell food. I wanted to give this to you before you started your lesson. Creationism. Hmm. Now, is this from the school board or your own personal collection? Well, we believe in teaching an alternative. Miss Ward, these opinions are far more religious than scientific. God created the universe. That's not an opinion. That's a fact. This is a science class, not a Sunday school. Let me make something very clear, Miss Del Rio. It is in your best interest to get along with me. Let me make something very clear to you, Debbie. I'm fucking this cat. You just hold the legs. Got it? So you had a lot of RuPaul girls on your movie. Was there anyone who really surprised you? Uh, well, no, it was quite exciting because, you know, most people think it's my actual film, but my brilliant friend Matt Kugelman wrote it and directed it, and he did the casting because as soon as the casting came out, well, I want to be in it, I want to be in it, I'm like, oh, I don't want to go nowhere near any of that. So he had chosen uh, Willem and Shangela to be in the movie, along with Alyssa Edwards, and they're all friends of mine, and they were quite lovely and amazing. And the one that really surprised me the most was Willem because he was on time and he wasn't an asshole, so that was pretty amazing. But uh, it was a great time we had. We filmed it last uh, July, so in the middle of the summer, in drag, outside, in Texas. So you can only imagine what that brought up. But it was a great experience and I'm glad it happened. So post RuPaul, you've been very complimentary of Laganja. Have any girls changed your opinion since being on the show? Well, I think I, my opinion changed on everybody after we finished filming. You know, when we do uh, something like Drag Race, it's a very condensed amount of time and people are under tons of pressure and people handle it differently. So at the moment, that was what I felt, you know, day to day experiencing it. And then after the fact, I think they had the opportunity to re-examine re the situation. And once it started airing, you're like, oh, I get it, they get it. And then we've all actually become far more, friend more, far more friendly than I anticipated, which is kind of nuts. But they're all great. You know, they're all very talented group of people and it's an amazing experience. I mean, it's opened up so many doors for me to get to do this, you know, which is nuts. So your show, Roll Index of Hate, was a big success. How was it? Yeah, I traveled with that last year uh, and we did 93 performances all over between here and uh, Vienna and London and Australia. And I just started my new tour, which was in Australia. And I did Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane and Canberra uh, with my new show, Not Today Satan, which is coming here in October as well. So I'm quite excited. So how's it different from Roll Index of Hate? Uh, well, it, what happened was when I was doing Roll Index of Hate, there were several funny situations that happen that I couldn't discuss because the show was already set. So my normal thing is to just take whatever I'm experiencing and turn it into the show. Where this, I then started writing everything down, which gave me all the ammunition for the next time around. So it's me discussing some really serious situations that have happened to me that I've had to find funny. If not, I would have been suicidal. And also just, you know, what I experience on a day-to-day -day basis and what I hate, you know, because there's so much that we all can relate to that we hate. I mean, I'm in America. Trump, hello? It's a fucked up place. How's your uncle? Uh, he's good, he's good. <laughs> Actually, my uncle did not molest me, although everybody thinks they did, but no, no, no. He's, he hasn't. I mean, my aunt's really upset because, you know, she didn't get any credit, but yeah. What do you hate most about Toronto? What do I hate? You know, I haven't seen much of Toronto. With the schedule that I have, it's kind of like I get in and I do a show and then I head back out. So I've seen my hotel, I've seen room service and an occasional hooker, but uh, it's, it's, been, it's been lovely. I mean, it's clean and it's pretty and the weather's nice, so I, I can't complain. You know, and I gotta move here if Trump becomes president, so get ready. You might, I might be the new person living here. So if you could do a new show with any Rue girl, who would it be and why would it be Bob the Drag Queen? Uh, wait, <laughs> doing a show, like a, like a traveling show? Yeah. Well, Bob and I have been friends for years and I would love to work with Bob and we worked together many times in New York uh, for about a year. And what I love about Bob is that he's also brilliantly talented and very funny, but also just a generous performer because it takes a lot to work with someone when they're not trying to fight for the spotlight. So it's kind of great. It's like a relay race. We just pass the baton back and forth and we've talked about it, but you know, he just won and he's, spoiler, he just won. Uh, I've had that happen on social media. Everybody's complaining. I didn't watch it yet, but um, he won and he's, you know, he's of course got a full schedule right now. So I'm going to be traveling with my show. So maybe in the future, no, definitely not ruling it out because he's, he's genius and quite funny. Is there anyone else you do a show with? I would do a show with anybody. You know, this Courtney Act and I talked about doing a show together, very similar to a uh, Carol Burnett, Julie Andrews type of situation. But the problem is just timing, you know, just having everything mesh with everyone. Uh, but with between the movie and the tour, it's like, you know, I'm publicizing this right now, but I'm not ruling anything out. So RuPaul has said drag will never be mainstream. Do you agree with that? Well, I think Ru's been 
through the process, and I think Rui probably has a better idea of what the situation is like. You know, I mean, he's definitely broken through a lot of barriers and getting to, I mean, now we're in people's living rooms, you know, all over the world, which I think is pretty amazing. But uh, maybe it won't happen for him, but I think it's quite possible. I mean, I didn't expect all of this to happen. Not so much the opportunities, but just the interest, which I think is kind of great. And it's opened up doors for people to see that drag is not necessarily something clinical or someone crazy or someone who wants to be a woman. For us, it's, you know, it's performance and it's acting and it's fun. But uh, I think that they realize now it's not as harmful as they thought. So it's definitely changed people's perception of drag. So I, I wouldn't rule it out just yet. So if there's one sort of major misconception people have about drag that you wish you could correct, what would that be? That I care. Because <laughs> I don't care. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you like. And we live in a world now where everybody on social media voices their opinions and they want to school you on what you need to do and what it's about. And for every good comment, you get a bad comment. And I think what they real, don't realize is that, I mean, I'm older, so I came up before they had internet and all this madness. And I really don't give a shit. I don't care what you think because 99% of the stuff that people type they would never say to your face. So it doesn't bother me, it doesn't faze me. For me, I, you know, I don't care for the Kardashians, so I don't watch it, I don't entertain it, I think they're useless and untalented. So you're entitled to your opinion, but I'm not blowing up Kim Kardashian's page, I hate you, you're ugly, you don't give a shit, I don't care. Yeah. And I think that's the big problem, is that, you know, people think, people think too much, you know, and you can't care. You know, you're not gonna please everybody, someone's always gonna say, I don't like her, it's not my thing, it's not my cup of tea. Don't watch it, don't buy it, don't entertain it. Now that we're best friends. Yes. I wonder if you could read me. Oh, I gotta, well that's very, well, you gotta come to my show. I can read you in October. You bring your camera, you come to the show and I'll read you then. Cause I haven't had any drinks yet. It's only what, nine, eight? What yeah, time is this? This is pretty early. I haven't started drinking yet. So as soon as I start drinking, we can make the magic. But I promise you I can read you next time I'm here. Okay. I'll... Wear this shirt. <laughs> Cause there's a lot to say about that. <laughs> Done, I'll wear yeah, it. Well, ready. thanks so much for being with us today, Bianca. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah, and course. I haven't said that since my uncle, but thank you. <laughs>